knows who knows what the electromagnetic spectrum is? Can anybody? Congratulate you for making an effort, even if the answer is not correct. Okay, so we started with the EM spectrum. Anybody know what it is? Yes, go, go, go. Spectrum of electromagnets. Spectrum of electromagnets. Okay, all right. Wrong. An area affected by electromagnets. Nice try, but not correct. Let's have one more try over here. Sure so, so just, just can you just start that from the beginning because there's talk over here and this gentleman has actually got something very important to contribute and I think he's almost won a prize too. Say it again. This basically the spectrum which includes visible light, x-rays, microwaves, gamma, That gentleman is exactly correct. Everyone big round. Our special giveaways today. There's a beautiful poster of the stars and planets and constellations. Congratulations, he is exactly correct. The electromagnetic spectrum is about light. Some of that light you can see, most of it you cannot see. And as he correctly mentioned, it's about the visible light that comes from the light bulbs and comes from the sun, but also radio waves, microwaves, infrared, ultraviolet, and the most powerful part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which is the gamma rays. Believe me, you don't want to be exposed to them, but you are. In fact, there's gamma rays passing through this room right as we speak. They're tearing through your body. They're ripping through the whole room. You cannot see them, you cannot feel them, but believe me, they are there. And those gamma rays came from other sources in the universe, possibly black holes that are billions of light years from us. Believe me, but they're there. And thankfully, the gamma rays that come from space, the energy of them is dissipated in the atmosphere. And this is why astronauts have to be very, very careful because outside the atmosphere, pure gamma rays will actually, literally chop up your genetic material in the nucleus of your cells like a like a whipper snipper okay you know, and it rips through it'll actually tear the dna apart and cause cancerous growth so gamma rays are actually extremely dangerous for astronauts in space but thankfully here on earth we are protected by the atmosphere where the same gamma rays are not quite so powerful would you like to add something to that mr gamma ray gamma rays turn hulk into hulk what? Oh, Turn <laughs> so the Hulk and Hulk. Do gamma rays? He just has to get angry, doesn't he? Like, oh, okay, so Mr. Hulk got the power by exposed to gamma rays. Well, you know what sort of damage they can do. Hey, anyway, we did not come here to talk about gamma rays all day long. I want to just do a very quick, short presentation on some of the latest discoveries that have been possible using very, very amazing telescopes. One of these telescopes is called the Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope. Now, the first question I can ask is, why would we want to put a telescope in space? What advantage do we get from putting a telescope in space? I saw this, this guy in the red, he had his hand up first. I can do that from Earth. Because the atmosphere actually distorts the star system 
phase of the universe. So seeing those distances, you need telescopes like this. Let's have a look and see what it's been doing. So the universe for over 20 years, and as you can see here, it's taken some of the most incredible images of galaxies. And here is, by example, one beautiful galaxy. And you can see billions of stars, dusty lanes, the galactic core where there's probably a black hole, a supermassive black hole. And here's another in extraordinary example of a beautiful galaxy called the Sombrero Hat Galaxy for obvious reasons. But once again you can see an extraordinary dust lanes, this intensive core of high activity. Now we are looking at what will probably happen to the sun at the end of its life. This is a nebula made up of gases. These gases have been ejected by the parent star at the center of this huge cloud of gas. And this is something similar to what will happen to our sun. Conversely, what you're seeing here is the beginning of stars. And up here you can see four little baby stars that are nested inside an enormous cloud of hydrogen. This particular cloud of hydrogen is called the Orion Nebula. It's a favorite observing target for astronomers and you can see it extends in the most extraordinary wings of gas and dust that span out across the cosmos and inside here small stars are starting to form and begin their lives. Galaxies colliding, moving through space. Here we can see galaxies being torn apart by gravitational forces as they collide with each other in the universe see the distortions of the galactic arms here which tell us that the galaxies are starting to collide with each other. This is probably what the Milky, probably what the Milky Way looks like. Um, this is what we call a barred spiral galaxy. You can sort of see this bar going through the middle and it may well be similar to the size and shape of the uh, Milky Way galaxy. Blue stars, are they hot or cold? Extremely hot. These stars are at about 20,000 degrees. Our sun emits energies of about 6,000 degrees. The blue stars are the hot stars, not the cold ones as people often think. Once again, you can see just here in the middle, tiny little sun. This probably was a similar star to our sun. And after another three billion years, our sun star, the sun, will probably end up in some sort of nebula looking like this. There's another one coming up called the Ring Nebula. And the star that generated this extraordinary sort of, what do you call it, looks like an eye, doesn't it, in space, is going to be uh, 
very similar to what happens to the sun in about three billion years. Uh, we will no longer be here, Earth will no longer be here, but there will be something very beautiful left behind, as you can see here. Vast columns of dust and gas, molecular clouds of hydrogen and complex organic compounds. These are the basically the regions where new stars are being born, new solar systems are being generated. We have the opportunity now to actually watch the process of star formation and see stars actually beginning to form. It's an incredible era of astronomy research. And by example, this one here, see these two jets come out here? It's called Stellar Jets, and nestled inside that cloud is a brand new baby star and probably planets forming around it. So we as humans now have the ability to actually watch new solar systems in the process of formation. It truly is a remarkable time we live in. More nebulas, and I think we're coming up now with the next image. Uh, after this one, we'll see the Milky Way galaxy itself. And uh, what an amazing sight. You can see what we call reflection nebulas and uh, absorption nebulas here. Well, they're total darkness now. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and also you can see these little globules here where the new solar systems are forming. These are called Bok globules. Uh, now, just one quick pause here. One quick pause. How many galaxies can you see in this photograph? Many. Many, many. Many, many. I heard many, many out there. Okay. This is the big one we can all see. But essentially, every single point of light, every single point of light in this image is a galaxy. And just to finish off this part of the presentation is that our universe is full of galaxies. Each one is made up of hundreds of billions of stars. Each of those stars probably has planets revolving around it. We have now begun to see planets and detect planets revolving around other stars. This is an exciting time of astronomy research that we uh, are experiencing at the moment. And yes, folks, we now have detected planets that could be similar to Earth. And when I say similar in size and also possibly the capacity to have liquid water on the surface. So we are now at the threshold of understanding that there may actually be other habitable planets in our galaxy, but certainly throughout the universe, there's no question about it in my mind. All right, let's finish up there. Can we um, go to the next just part of this presentation? I'm just going to, uh, let's just see what, just one last thing. I think there was uh, one picture of the Milky Way, just one moment. What an amazing place. Oh, yes, don't forget this. You are made of that. Supernova remnants. All of you are stars, as far as I'm concerned. It's true. I speak the truth. You must remember that you are actually made of this. And after a large star has finished its life, they sometimes explode in massive explosions called supernovas. And in this particular case, you can see the material that the star was made of rich in iron and nitrogen and oxygen and other materials. It's blasted all that material across space. Some of this material will go into building new worlds, new solar systems, and it's exactly what happened to Earth. Our planet would not be here for the fact that there was a supernova, maybe several, in this vicinity of the universe, in our galaxy. The, the detritus, the, the, the ash, of those explosions contains all of the minerals, uh, the basic elements that you're made of, the iron in your blood, the carbon in your hydrocarbons and your fats, the oxygen that you breathe, the oxygen that's in locked, uh, encased in parts of your body, was all produced in one of these explosions. So you are actually made of supernova material. You were a star once, and you still are now, I hope, okay? All right. Yes, you're a star, honestly.